Good afternoon, guys. This is Bethany, and welcome to our webinar on using appointments with HomeGage Services. Um, today, we're going to go through uh, all the, the ins and outs of scheduling an appointment, all the ways to edit your notifications, uh, things like that. We have a specific webinar for uh, setup. So if you're interested on in how to import your agreements, how to set up your specific inspection services, we're going to look at that stuff briefly today, but there's a webinar dedicated to it uh, on YouTube. It's called uh, HomeGage Dashboard Setup, Loading Your Agreements and Inspection Services. So if you're interested in that, uh, if you'll take a look at the handouts section of your webinar toolbar, you'll notice that I have uploaded a PDF document for you there of helpful links um, that set up webinars at the very top. So today we're just going to go through inputting an appointment and how to make all of the different edits through your dashboard. So uh, let's just dive right in. Uh, before we get good and started, I'll tell you that we are going to have several question and answer periods throughout the webinar. If you'll just type your questions into the question section of your webinar toolbar, when we hit one of those periods, I'll try to make sure I get everybody answered. We'll also have a big question and answer period at the very end where we can talk about anything, uh, even if it's not related to this particular topic. So. I'll start out by telling you guys on your HomeGage dashboard, which is what you're seeing on my screen right now, uh, even on the front page, you can get straight to your appointments feature. You can hit start report, or you can hit your calendar to just take a look at what you've got going on. Uh, when you hit start report, it's, it has the same effect as going in your main menu under appointments and clicking on the new appointment link. So a couple ways to get there. You can also go into your calendar and just select a time slot straight from the calendar by clicking and dragging. So it's an up to you how you get in there, okay? Uh, we're just gonna start with a blank so we can go through everything together. Your very first slot under new appointments will be date and time. You wanna throw in your date and time here, obviously. There's a couple other things I'll point out though. Um, if you'll take a look here at the set as time off option, uh, this is if you have a doctor's appointment or another engagement and you want to remind yourself not to set an appointment. Um, you can set time off this way. Uh, you can even list a little reason. It'll knock out the rest of your new appointment page. You obviously don't need that if you just go into a doctor's appointment. But it's good to know that that option is there. If you're doing a real appointment, which is what we're going to do today, uh, you want to choose your date and time. So we'll pick 2 p.m. Uh, this Sunday, and I'm going to leave my end time blank. I have the box checked to update appointment end time automatically. When you load in your services, you can also give an estimated time for each service. If you do that, your appointments feature will figure out how long your appointment should last and set your end time automatically for you. So it takes out some guesswork. Uh, the next block down is your property location. You want to put in your property address here. When you put in your address, you'll get a BuildFax preview. For those of you that aren't familiar with BuildFax, you can get more information under Account Settings, Home Gauge Partners. There's also a link in that handout that I've given for you guys. But there's a preview. If you do want to purchase the Build Facts report, there's a button right here that you can do that in. Um, you can have some handwritten directions in this area. Uh, you can also open up driving directions in a new tab. That'll take you to your MapQuest, Google Maps, uh, let you go ahead and map out your course. You can keep up with your driving distance here. There's a handy report through Business Insights if you're keeping up with this stuff that'll let you print a mileage report for the year or the quarter, however you're paying your taxes. So there's your property location. Under appointment details, you have a whole lot of little options in here. Um, I'm going to start by talking about the report ID. If you'll notice, I have the box checked to auto-generate my report ID from the date and address if I don't type anything in. So for you guys that have been talking to me over the years, you know that I always suggest if you're going to have a report ID uh, to use something that's difficult to duplicate, something like the property address combined with the date of the inspection. 
it's very, very unlikely that you're going to have a reinspection the same day as the original. So it's very unlikely that you're going to duplicate. This actually follows that same rule. So if you're already doing that, let it auto generate for you. Uh, it'll follow the same rule you're already following. If you don't use report IDs, then definitely keep it checked. Let it auto generate. This is how uh, the dashboard as well as your software associates files uh, with the correct address. So you definitely want to have a report ID. Um, you can also list your referrals here. You can do custom referral sources as well. Um, if you hover over the little I, you'll notice that it sends you somewhere in your main menu, and we're going to look at that a little bit later. If you're choosing previous customer, then you can also track who that customer is. So, Inspector comments is an area just for you. It's a great place to keep up with a gate code, a logbox key code, something like that. Uh, there's one small caveat. If you are in Texas, uh, the Texas Trek report has an area in the intro page for additional comments by the inspector. Inspector comments is where that comes from. So if you're in Texas, be aware of that. Otherwise, uh, for anybody else, this is a great place to keep information that you only want yourself to be able to see and you don't want to share that with your clients or their realtors or whatever's going on there. Um, also a place for pet instructions. Uh, you can keep up with the year your home that you're going to inspect was built, uh, square footage, all important information to have, MLS numbers if you'd like, all of this information is actually um, not required. You can put in what you do know uh, or not put anything in at all. If you don't know anything yet, uh, it's up to you. Uh, all of your appointment details are optional. So fill this out if, if you find it helpful. Um, if you don't have that information, you can always come back later and put it in or you can add it to your final report. It's up to you. So there's your appointment details page. Uh, next we have services. Before I go into the to adding a service, I'm just going to show you we have two checkboxes here next to the button to add and update your services. One is request payment. One is to require payment to view documents. If you have request payment checked, that's just going to let your customer know that they do owe a certain amount for their inspection. If you require payment, your customer will not be able to access their inspection report until you have marked that item as paid or they've paid online they can pay with a credit card if you set that up through home gauge and then it'll automatically unlock if you don't have credit card processing set up um, you'll just have request payment checked by default you won't have require payment checked but a lot of inspectors do like to require the payment even if they're accepting a payment in some other form rather than credit card so you can check that to block access to documents uh, and I'll show you a little bit later where you can go and change those defaults if it's something you like to do every time. So under services, we're just going to hit the add update services button. We'll look at how to edit these and import and change later. Uh, but for here, we're just going to choose our service. So uh, let's see. We'll choose a home inspection. We have several tabs up here just because I've organized my services into groups. So under additional, we'll say um, we're going to have a radon test and maybe we'll even give a discount. So once we've chosen all our services, they'll pull into our appointment page. They'll do all the math for us. Right? We can edit these just by deleting and hitting the add update button to add different services in if you make a mistake. Um, that's your services section. Next is the agreements. Uh, I actually have my services associated with certain agreements. So my radon services come in and pull in the radon agreement with them. Uh, my regular home inspection services pull in my normal pre-inspection agreement. We'll cover how to associate those items a little bit later in this webinar. Uh, but if you don't have those services already associated, it's just a matter of choosing the ones that you would like so that they move into the selected column. Okay, and you can choose multiple. You can have as many agreements there as you'd like. Lots of people has, have an addendum, a uh, separate commercial, uh, radon usually comes with its own. So it's up to you and how you do business to, as to what you're going to choose there. 
If you have multiple inspectors, the next block down will let you choose what inspector you're scheduling for. So you can schedule for one inspector or multiples. It's an up to you. Uh, whoever you choose here, that'll be who has the ability to download that appointment information into their software to start the report. So you definitely want to choose who you're actually sending. But that's your multi-inspector option. If you're a single inspector, you're not going to have an option to choose here. We already know it's you. Down at the bottom, you'll find an area to enter your customer information and your real estate professional information. You've got a couple of options here. You can choose to create a brand new customer. Uh, what's required when you do that is a first and last name and an email address. From there, just hit the Create New Customer button and that'll create your brand new customer. If you've done business with this customer before, you can use the search field or the select customers button. So, and you can add multiples. You certainly aren't relegated to just picking one. So, there's one. If you are adding multiple customers here and you're having to differentiate between buyers and sellers, you can do that through the appointments feature. So you can say which one's which, just so you can keep up with it later. Um, same goes for the real estate professionals. You can create a brand new real estate professional by entering first and last name as, as well as email address. Uh, obviously with a real estate professional, you're probably gonna wanna record phone numbers, company names, things like that. All of that's optional. It's up to you whether or not you record it. You also have a search for your real estate professionals, which you'll use quite often. Uh, hopefully you're getting that repeat business from your real estate agents. So that's how you add a realtor. So uh, you can actually have multiples here as well. We don't limit the number of customers and realtors you attach to an appointment. So that's, that's totally up to you. Um, once you get done with all of this stuff and you've got it all filled out, your next step is just gonna be to hit schedule appointment. So I'm gonna pause right here uh, just for a minute and see if any questions came up while I was filling out the new appointment page so that we can make sure we get those answered. And then if not, we'll just keep going. So any questions that you have, go ahead and type those into your questions section of your webinar toolbar now. doesn't look like we currently have any questions on this. So just to recap, what we did was we started a new appointment, uh, three ways to do that. So uh, I showed you that at the very beginning, we filled out all of the different sections throughout the appointment. And the very last step on this page is to hit schedule appointment. You also have the option to save changes only. This comes in handy if you have a realtor that calls you and says, hey, I need you to do an inspection tomorrow. I don't have the address in front of me, uh, but I'll call you back soon. You can go in and you can go ahead and put in the information that you do have. Hit save changes only that way when that realtor calls you back, not only have you already blocked a spot off for that inspection, but you don't have to remember what they said before. You can just fill in the blanks. Um, same goes for customers, obviously. So save changes only is a great option if you don't have all of your information complete yet. We're gonna hit schedule appointment because uh, we've got all our stuff filled out. Ah, report ID. So in showing you guys the auto generate report ID, I actually unchecked the box. So anytime you miss something in our appointments feature, it'll let you know what's going on. If you forget to add an agreement, uh, if you're missing part of your address, whatever it is, it'll tell you. Um, and then you can just correct it and keep going. The very next page is going to be where we preview our agreements and make any edits that we want. That's because when you assign an agreement in your appointments feature, it goes ahead and creates those documents so we can get an electronic signature. Uh, you'll notice at the very top that uh, you have the option to allow your real estate professional to view your agreement. We default that to no. Uh, we found that most inspectors don't feel like they need to share that information with their real estate professionals. Uh, if you do want to share that, you just toggle it over to yes by clicking and then you can give permissions that way as well. Down below, we have the custom note that goes out to our customer at the very top of the page right before they sign the agreement. 
So this is just some little verbiage that says, hey, you need to assign this agreement before we can let you view the report or before I can come out. It's customizable, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, you can actually type right in here as well if you've got something specific that you want to say. You can change that per customer, per appointment. Uh, below that, you'll have your actual agreement documents. So we had two. So I have two spots here. You can roll through this, preview it, make any changes that you might need to make. Uh, if you're happy with all of these documents, go ahead and just hit the Create Agreement Documents button. You've got one of those at the bottom of the page as well as at the top of the page. The reason for that is a lot of you will have your agreements tweaked and, and perfect and you won't have to really worry about making edits. So we give you a place at the top just to save you a little bit of time if you are in that position. Once you hit your Create Agreement Documents button, the very next page is where you send out your report notifications. So, hey, we have an appointment this day and this time. Uh, I need you to send to sign your uh, electronic agreement so that I can come out. Uh, you can view or edit the message just by clicking this button here. You can also change the defaults, and we'll look at that a little bit later. If you don't want to send an email, just uncheck the Send This Email block next to each customer name or real estate professional name, whatever you want to do there. Your inspector also gets the email. This is great if you're a multi-inspector firm and you've got maybe an admin person scheduling for you. You definitely want to know when you have an appointment. So um, you can actually also set up a text message uh, alert for this, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, the other field is just for uh, maybe outside vendors. If you're farming out your maybe your sewer scope, something like that and you need to let that person also know that you guys have an appointment this day, this time, you would just uh, view and edit the message, enter your email for that other inspector or other vendor, whatever they're doing for you, if you're coming out to take a water test, anything really. Once you type that in, it'll go straight to them. You can separate by commas if you want to send to multiple folks. At the bottom, you have the option to either continue without sending your notifications, which means nobody gets the email, maybe you're not ready yet, or you can just send the notifications, which is what I'm going to do. Once you do that, it'll get us back to our calendar, and you'll see that appointment showing up. There it is, right under Sunday. So uh, that's, that's the whole process of scheduling an appointment. Uh, I'm going to pause real briefly. I, I know that we have at least one question in here, but if you have any others, go ahead and type those in and we're going to have a small question and answer period. Jay asks, will the fee schedule I have set up in HomeGage automatically populate in the appointment scheduler? Jay, uh, the setup link the the webinar about setting up your inspection services and your agreements will take you through this pretty in depth but there is a way to upload your services that you have listed in the invoice tab of your software into your dashboard so that you don't have to recreate all of that stuff and that webinar will take you through that so the answer the short answer is yes uh, you can certainly do that Michelle has a question, how would this look for multiple inspectors? Michelle, this is actually what you're seeing on my screen right now is a multi-inspector environment. Um, obviously, all of my inspectors are pretend, uh, but all of these different colors that you see in the calendar, these are different inspectors who have appointments. So here's my Tim inspector. He's got an appointment Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, the guys in black here are multiple inspectors all going to the same appointment. You have several different views, so you can look at Daily, weekly, monthly, uh, you can switch over to the daily view and see a timeline. That way you can check out all of your inspectors and where, where they're going to be that day. Um, you can also look at a map view so that you can see where your inspectors are at. If you're trying to schedule for a multi-inspector firm uh, and you try and real hard not to send somebody all over the town in a big giant circle when you've got somebody right next to the next appointment, uh, this is a great view to take a look at. Just to show you again, in the actual new appointment screen, 
Um, the option to schedule for multiple inspectors is under the inspectors window. You would just choose the inspector that you want to assign this job to. So that's your multi-inspector view. So it looks like we don't have any other questions right now, so we're just going to keep on trucking, keep going through this webinar. Um, I actually was going to show you guys the calendar views next. So Michelle, you, you had a really good timely question. I'll take you back through one more time. Um, this is what it normally looks like when you're checking out your calendar. Here's my calendar view. This is a multi-inspector firm that I have set up, so you see different colors. Um, obviously, I have different uh, inspectors going out to different jobs throughout the week. You have some options right in the calendar view. If you click one of these appointments, you'll see that you have the option to uh, edit, obviously. You can also double click to do that. You can check out the map view, so you can go to Google Maps. Uh, or you can just print the appointment details. A lot of folks like to have a hard copy in the truck when they go out. So that's an option for you as well. If you have somebody that you need to reschedule, you can literally click and drag within the calendar view and move them to a new date and time. You'll get a little confirmation. Choose to reschedule. It'll let you send out a notification saying, hey, we rescheduled you, right? Um, the black boxes are always going to be the multiple inspectors on one job uh, and there is a way to change these colors around we'll look at that when we take a look at the Google Calendar sharing um, but here's your calendar view again daily weekly or monthly um, you can take a look through the daily view at timelines so we can see who's going where and when a little bit more clearly or you can look at the map view to see where your inspectors are and what time so that you can more appropriately assign an inspector in a multi-inspector environment. So that's your calendar views. Uh, I'm going to just answer this question right now even though we're not in a, a question and answer period. Michelle asks a follow-up question. In the multi-inspector view, can all the inspectors see everyone's schedule or only their own? Michelle, they can only see their own schedule, especially uh, when it comes to uh, reporting, things like that. We don't want to tell your employees what you're doing with your other employees. Um, this is an admin account, a team lead, uh, and that's why I can see everybody. So if you've got someone scheduling for you or you're taking care of all the scheduling for your multiple inspectors, you're going to see everything. You're going to be able to schedule for everyone. Your inspectors will not have that luxury. They'll only be able to see their own schedules. So, Let's take a look at how to edit an appointment since we're here. To edit this appointment, I would just uh, double click, like I said, or I could have clicked and dragged to change the date and time. Um, you can get here into the edit screen a lot of different ways. Um, so you just saw me double click through the calendar view. Uh, I could also, uh, on my all reports page where my pre-inspection agreements are living, I could go into the agreement location. So where it says agreement not signed here, that's clickable. Uh, and I'll have an edit appointment link right here. There's another one just like it under the payment information screen. I can edit the appointment from here. So there's lots of ways to get into this. We try to give you plenty of options because we don't want you to have to click all over the place to get where you need to go. Um, so just so you're aware, anytime you need to edit an appointment and you're in an area that you know you need to change, you probably have a link that will get you there quickly. Um, we also have a search function under appointments, which is kind of nice if you're looking for something that you did a couple of months ago or maybe somebody's rescheduling and you haven't heard from them in a while. Um, the search function will use several different parameters. You can enter the street number, the address, even postal codes. If you want to just look at everybody in a certain area, um, you can look up by last name for your customer or your real estate representative. Uh, and it'll show you everything that comes up for that particular search field. So that's a way to get to an appointment that's been scheduled for a while or has been previously canceled, something like that. Also a good way to get into the edit. Um, there are some other things you can do from the edit window. So let me show you that. You have an actions drop down when you're in the edit window. Uh, that lets you either send out your notifications again 
maybe you have somebody that says they didn't get it um, or maybe it, it landed in their spam they can't quite figure out how to get to it or you just for any reason need to resend your notifications you can do that through actions um, there's a print option there you also have that on the calendar view uh, you can view the history of an appointment so if the appointment has been changed we'll we'll actually log that with the date and the time we'll tell you what the change was um, so if you're if you're wondering how something uh, got changed if you're like I'm sure it said this before and maybe you're in a multi inspector environment or you have multiple admins you can take a look and see when it happened and what happened uh, it's just kind of handy information to have you can also view any documents associated so I can click view inspection documents it'll take me straight to my pre-inspection agreement and then you can also copy an appointment that's really handy if you have someone that's maybe looking at multiple houses or maybe they've had to reschedule something like that you can go back to their last appointment hit copy make the changes you need and schedule again it's up to you so your actions drop down is, is pretty handy um, at the bottom of the page when you're in the edit appointment window you still have the options to schedule the appointment save changes only or cancel the appointment if you need to cancel that out entirely you can um, if you hit schedule appointment and you've changed a date and time changed customer information certain things will trigger uh, the email that says hey we've had a change to your appointment here's what it is uh, you can choose at that time whether or not you want to send that notification uh, if you hit save changes only you'll never even get to the notification screen it'll just update the appointment so that's up to you how you handle that I'm gonna pause briefly I know we've got at least one other question coming in so if you guys have any other questions about editing an appointment or calendar views please do go ahead and submit those and we'll get those answered for you before we move on Jay has a question for us can you schedule an inspection for multiple dates something like a multifamily or commercial inspection Jay in that scenario what I would do is make the first appointment obviously and then I would come up to my actions drop down at the top right and I would choose to copy the appointment change the date and time and do that as many times as I needed uh, that'll make it a lot faster for you to go through and get everybody everything scheduled if you've got one of those multi-date appointments going on It looks like we don't have any other questions coming in right now at least so let's keep going and um, we'll obviously have a few more spots where we can ask questions along the way don't worry if you haven't got yours typed in yet uh, the next thing I want to look at with you guys is still under the appointments menu and your main menu on your dashboard that's where we're gonna focus today but we're gonna go into company settings next so if you're following along that's under appointments about halfway down that sub menu you'll see company settings there are a lot of things you can do in here um, I'm gonna skip this very top one because we're gonna have a, a little uh, jaunt off into a different topic with that uh, so I'll go through the rest of the page first um, obviously you can set the number of days before appointment reminders go out for your customers or your real estate reps if you want to send them an email that says hey don't forget we have an appointment you can toggle how many days here on the company settings page so right now it's set to two you can take change it to one three whatever works best for your company um, you can carbon copy those appointment email reminders uh, maybe you have an admin person that wants to be sure that all of that got sent out type that admin person's email address here under carbon copy appointment email reminders and they'll get everything we sent for the email reminders so that'll be handy handy for admin folks definitely uh, you can set your time zone here this is especially important if you want to use Google Calendar sharing which we're gonna look out a little bit later in this webinar I uh, definitely want to have a good time zone uh, otherwise we're not going to share the right information to your Google Calendar uh, you can also update your custom appointment referral sources if you guys will remember under the uh, additional information section on that new appointment page you can set your referral source if you are running a specific marketing campaign or you're 
uh, maybe tracking specific realtors, something like that, you can type that in here and it'll add it to that drop down list in your new appointments page. So that's good to know about. All right, so now let's scroll back up to the top of the company settings page. You guys will see a link at the top that says manage your public appointment settings. I'm going to click that link and we're going to talk a little bit about the public appointment request feature that we have in place. Uh, you guys that have a website, this will be pretty handy for you. You can have your customers come in and request an inspection. Uh, so they're the ones typing in all of their contact information, the property address, realtor info. Saves you a little bit of time, especially if you're on a roof when they call. You can send them to your website and say, hey, go ahead and enter all this information and I'll follow up with you as soon as I'm available, right? So the first thing you'll notice is you actually have to turn this on by enabling the public appointment request feature. Uh, there's also a new option down below. This is a brand new feature that we've just added. You can allow your customers and agents to select uh, services through that public appointment request feature. So if you turn this little guy on, there's a way, and we're going to look at that here in just a moment, to go in and make certain groups of services or specific services themselves available for the public to see through this feature. Uh, if you turn that on and you have some things set up, your customers will be able to choose what they want from you. I need radon, I need an inspection for this, this amount of square footage, they'll be able to see whatever you choose to display. So, for this I'm going to turn both of these guys on uh, and we'll kind of keep scrolling down. I'm going to show you this from the customer side here in just a moment. So, you'll also notice um, the company notification email. So, by default, any owner or manager account in a multi-inspector environment gets the notification whenever someone goes through and, pu and requests an appointment through that public appointment feature. If you would rather that go somewhere else or in addition, then you can type the email in here under company notification email. So that's if you have an admin person that needs to be able to keep up with that stuff. You want to type your email address in here so that you get those notifications as well as the lead inspector on the team. So I'm going to go ahead and save my settings since I just turned on my public services. You'll notice at the very bottom of the page, you can check out your public appointment request feature yourself. So I'm going to actually take this little link that's down at the bottom of this window and we're going to go check out this feature. So um, bear with me here. This is a lot like what your customer will see when they come to schedule through your website. We've got some information uh, in widget form for your website on the same page. Uh, you can have a link to request the appointment and in that case this is exactly what your customer will see or you can embed the appointment request page into your website so that they never leave your site which is good. Um, your code for either of those is down at the bottom of your company settings public appointments page. So just so you know where those are. But I'm going to be a customer right now and I'm going to request an appointment just so you guys can kind of see how that works. So if your customer is returning, they can use their HomeGage account. Um, so every, every customer has a username and password. That stays the same even if they're looking at multiple homes. That way all of their reports is in one, are in one spot. If your customer is brand new, they'll just hit the schedule and appointment button. Your realtors can also do this. So they, all, they obviously usually know their username and password. They're used to it by now. Um, they can go ahead and log in as well. So I'm going to log in as a returning customer. Once I've logged in, it's going to ask, hey, what's the property address? What are we going to inspect? We can have some handwritten directions turn right at the barn, uh, whatever local directions they need to give you. Uh, they'll also see them, their address coming up in a map view down below. They'll just next themselves through. Hey, who's your real estate professional? They can skip this if they don't know this information uh, or they can put it in. It's up to them. So.
So there's my ref info. And then we have the details page. Um, so they can put in any information that they do know. If they don't know, they don't have to fill it out. It's, it's kind of a put in what you can kind of situation. We don't obviously want them to not book an inspection with you because they don't remember their square footage. But if they do know it, we'd like you to know too. So it's kind of an up to them what they fill out in this page. They can even put in pet instructions. If it's a seller's inspection, something like that, they can go ahead and do that. This page is where they're actually going to select their services if you've toggled that on. So I can choose what I need. And I've only made some of my services available. I haven't made all of them visible to the public. We'll look at that a little bit later on how to do that. I didn't want them to see my discounts, um, my upcharge for an older home, things like that. You might want to leave out, you know. So you can choose what they have access to here. That's it up to you. Once you've chosen that, you just kind of next yourself through. It's going to ask them, you know, do you have any comments for your inspector? Is there something specific you need to know? Or is there something specific I need to know? Uh, also, they're going to have a, an option to give you their top two dates and times for this particular inspection request. And they can even specify what time of day. Once they get through that, they'll get to a confirm confirmation page. They can edit anything from this page. If they type something in wrong, they can go back and change it. There's a request appointment button at the bottom. After they do this, they're going to get a confirmation page. They'll get a confirmation email. You'll get an email. You'll be able to get to all this information on your dashboard. We're going to check that out next. This is what a customer would do to request an appointment. So let's go back to our inspector dashboard, just so you can see kind of what that looks like. Once you've had an appointment request, you can come in under appointments and you'll see that you have something unscheduled, right? So when I go to unscheduled, I'll see that request from that customer. I'll see the services that they've requested, their contact information, and yes, we do require phone number from them. Um, you can choose to edit the appointment. All of this will already be filled out for you. All you have to do at that point is choose your date and time. and you go through and make sure everything's there. So since I associated my agreements with my services, even though my customer chose the services, it's already decided what agreements they need to get. You'll see them already selected. All of this information is filled out for me. If you're a multi-inspector firm, you still need to choose the inspector that's going to go out there. Hit schedule, same process. I use this address a lot. This happens to be our company address, and I never want to use someone's home, you know, in a public forum. So <laughs> I guess I've already got this, this particular appointment scheduled. Uh, but after you go through and you pick your date and time, it's really just a matter of continuing the process, just like we did before, even with the sending of notifications. And then you'll see that that one is booked as well. So here it is down below. That's how your customer would go through with a public appointment request. Um, I want to show you real quick your inspection services area. Um, we just looked at the unscheduled, and then we'll take a stop for, for any questions that have come up because of that, that particular little demo. Um, to get to your inspection services, if they're already loaded, you're going to go to Appointments, Inspection Services. If they're not loaded, going to this page will actually prompt you to load your services in. So I know someone had asked, how can I get my services from my software into my dashboard? It's going to be through this link. Um, you'll have the option to import when you get to this page instead of seeing a services list. Okay. Um, if you already have services, you'll see that you can add a new service or a new service group at the very top. I've grouped all my stuff together. So here are my main inspection services. I have additional services in a separate group. And I also have some discounts, OK? So you can toggle your groups to be public or not public. Uh, to do that, you can tell this one is available in public because it's, it's just showing up right here at the bottom. You can see where my mouse is. Um, but to toggle the whole group, you're going to just choose the group name. Just click on that. 
and you'll have a little checkbox here that says services in this group are available in public appointment requests. If I uncheck this, this group will no longer be available for my customers to see when they use that feature. Okay, you can also delete whole groups if you want to. Um, if you wanted to toggle just maybe one or two services in the group off, if you've got maybe the whole group available for public, but you don't want to let them know uh, about one particular service, you just don't want it to be available in the service itself. And I got here by clicking the service name. Okay. There's also the same checkbox show in public appointment requests if group is shown. So you can toggle that per service or per group. It's up to you. And if you'll notice, um, if you don't have all this stuff in a group, you can start new groups right here. And you can add what you want. We'll give you the list of all of your services, and you choose what you want to have in this particular group. Okay? So that's how you would do that. I'm going to pause briefly for any questions that have come up through the demo on public appointments or about inspection services and how to edit them. Uh, so go ahead and type your questions in if you have any, and we'll get those covered real quick. I have a question from Michelle. Can you hide the prices of the inspection, but they still see or can put in the square footage? So Michelle, the answer to that is yes. You can uh, choose not to show your service items. It'll still ask them for the square footage of their home. Uh, I have plenty of inspectors that don't want to put their pricing out there, don't want to let their customers decide what they're going to buy because you have maybe ancillary services or uh, maybe the price changes if it's an older home, things like that. So you just wouldn't make these groups public at that point. Uh, in the future, for, for a future update, we'll probably have the availability to uh, show the service but not the price. That'll be something that'll come in a future update though. Uh, the fact that, that we can have them choose the inspection services is actually brand new. So uh, it's up to you whether or not you use that feature. Okay, doesn't look like we have any other questions for right now, so I'll remind you we'll have a big question and answer period at the end, but I want to show you a few other things before we spend too much time. So I'll just quickly show you uh, the Google Calendar sharing. Lots of folks are interested in that. I'll tell you um, the best thing to do would probably be to sign into your Google Calendar ahead of time. So let me get signed in and then I'll put that right back for you. Okay, so now we're signed into Google Calendar. Um, when you go to Google Calendar Sharing, under Appointments, Calendar Sharing, uh, a lot of you will see, if you haven't done this before, that you have to actually allow access to Google Calendar. There will be a big orange button. Just go ahead and deal with that. If you haven't set your time zone, you'll be prompted to do that too. Um, for those of you that have already kind of been swimming around in here and looking around, this is what you'll see. Uh, what this is showing me is uh, this list at the bottom is actually all of my existing calendars through Google Calendar. Uh, you can choose to create a new calendar, which is my suggestion to you to, for your appointments, uh, or you can add it to your existing calendar. So maybe you've already been tracking your appointments through Google Calendar. You can just add them to that if you'd like. I'm going to create a new calendar. Okay and I can choose who I'm going to put appointments in for. So for, for you guys that have multiple inspectors, 
Um, if you're going to use Google Calendar sharing and you care whether or not they see each other's appointments, what I would do is I would just choose a single inspector and have a Google Calendar for each particular inspector. That way if they're if you're sharing through your Google Calendar, you can share the, the one that's applicable to your employee. Um, but you can choose all inspectors. It's kind of enough to you. I'll do that this time just for brevity. Um, once you've given it a name and you've chosen who we're going to include appointments for, you just hit share this calendar. And that's going to update for us. And you'll see that this one comes in in blue right now. Uh, again, I can do the same thing per inspector. So I can just choose one inspector and I can have a whole new calendar for that. They'll all be color coded and the colors that are assigned here will actually reflect in the calendar area when you're looking at the calendar view. Um, this updates every two minutes. So let me see if I can get it to go ahead and add here. Yep. So uh, let me give you the next week so we'll have something to look at. In about two minutes, we'll revisit this and you should see all of my appointments populating. Um, again, Google crawls the site about every two minutes. Uh, to update any new appointment information, which is really nice. So uh, you can actually change the colors of these calendars. Here they come. So here's here's my, my one calendar coming in. You'll see the other one flowing in here probably in the next few seconds. But if you wanted to change the color, that's through Google Calendar. You have these little drop downs here. You can share the calendar. So maybe you have third party vendors. You need to be able to see what's going on for them too. You can share the calendar to them. Um, you can create uh, new colors just by choosing a new color, right? So I can be purple if I want to be. It's it's an up to you what you do with that. So once you do that, and you change the color in your calendar, it'll update over here too. And when you're in your calendar view, you should see different colors soon. It'll probably take another about two minutes. That's about how long it takes to update. But that's your calendar sharing. So that's a nice little feature, especially if you're in a multi-inspector firm. OK. Uh, the other thing I'll show you real quick is inspector settings. Even in a multi-inspector environment, all of your employees have access to this, and we'd encourage them to use it. If you would like to receive a text message, as in addition to or as opposed to an email when you have an appointment scheduled, you can enter your text message email address right here, and then that'll overtake or add to the notifications that you get. If you're not sure what your text message email address is, it's different for every provider. There's an SMS address link here at the top. It'll open a new tab for you that kind of gives you all of the different possibilities. So you would find your provider and that'll give you your, your email format. So that's inspector settings. Um, if you are interested in changing the boilerplate notification templates that go out uh, under appointments, you have a link called notification templates. You can change that text. Hey, you have an appointment scheduled. Please log in and, and sign your agreement. You, you might have something that you, get, you like to say every time um, or, or just you want to change the wording or you'd like to change what shows up in here. Right now, we give them a whole lot of information so they can go through and review their services. They can see any pet instructions they put in, uh, whether or not the utilities are on. The thought behind that is if something is wrong, they can let you know before you get there. If the utilities really aren't on, maybe they'll tell you. <laughs> you know, um, you can edit all of this, though, and decide what they're going to get, what they're going to see. Um, you can change your recipient types so you have a different notification template for customers as opposed to real estate professionals or what the actual inspector sees or even the other, which is your third party vendors. Um, you can decide what information you're going to give them. You have some merge fields in here. These little guys with the brackets and the dollar signs, those are merge fields that pull information from other areas in your dashboard. So my inspection date and time will autofill from my appointment info as well as my address. Um, if there's login details, that'll auto autofill itself depending on the customer. Um, so you can actually check out all the different merge fields and change them out and use different ones if you want. Uh, there's a replacement variables link in the bottom right. It'll give you a list of everything that's available. You can use these or not use these. Uh, it's up to you. You can also preview your messages. So if you want to see what it looks like without the merge field text, 
we'll fill in some, some boilerplate information for you so you can kind of get an idea of what your customer is going to see when this message actually gets to them, which is handy when you're editing. So that's your notification templates area. You can, uh, once you've made changes, you'll just come down here and hit save template changes, right? You have another area for your agreement templates. So if you need to make a change to the text in your agreement, you can do that here. As I said, you can have multiples. If you have not loaded an agreement here yet, you're gonna have some instructions. That'll be the first thing you see right after signing our agreement so that you can use this particular feature. Um, but if you've got agreements loaded in, you're gonna see the same thing I'm seeing here. You wanna select the agreement that you wanna edit. And you'll have a little text window below that'll show you all that good stuff. Again, you have merge fields here. You have the same link for replacements and preview down at the bottom right. Uh, you get all the same stuff that you normally do in a text editor, so you can make things bold, italic, center it, use bullets, or add a link. Your link button is actually this little guy that looks like a globe with a chain on it. So if you wanted to put a link maybe to your standards of practice in the email or in the agreement or uh, kind of whatever you need there, you can. You can also associate an agreement with services. If you have both your agreements and your services loaded, this is the best way to associate because you do it all at once instead of having to edit every single service. Uh, so when you hit this button, you're gonna see all the different services, right? And you can choose what you're gonna associate. So this particular agreement is just my regular agreement and I have it associated with all of my home inspection services. So you can change that just by clicking in here. The top little guy controls the entire row. So that's how you'd associate with services. If you wanted to associate a service with an agreement and maybe you just made the one single service, that's a new one, um, or if you just feel like going in this way under appointments and inspection services, when you are editing a specific service, so you'd click again on the service name, you'll also see down below that you can associate with agreements right at the bottom. Just check off the ones that you wanna pull when that service is selected. So some different options for how to do that, but it's really a handy little feature. Uh, and especially if you've got admin folks and they're not, maybe they're newer and they're not sure what addendum goes where, if you have them all associated, it's kind of a fail safe for you. So that's how you do that. Um, also in agreement templates, obviously if you get an agreement in here and you don't need it anymore or you made a mistake, you can delete the agreement. You've got a button for that. Uh, when you do make changes to an agreement, hit the save agreement changes down at the bottom, okay? If you wanted to, sit, to change that little note that comes up at the very top of the agreement page for your customer, you can edit your default agreement note. You've got a link right here. And here we are. It just takes us back to a notification page so that we can change that text if we want to. So that's how you would edit. Okay. Um, I believe that we've pretty well gotten through the entire um, little submenu here under appointments. So I'm going to pause and we're going to have a question and answer period. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording of the webinar for now for the folks that are going to watch this later on YouTube. Uh, you guys that are with me, I'm going to hang out with you as long as we need to get all of your questions answered. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, but for the folks that are watching this later, thanks very much for attending our webinar on using appointments with the HomeGage services.